So today we're going to talk about joule heating. Joule heating is the conversion of mechanical work into heat energy. Now, people in Joule's time didn't really know much about heat. They knew that objects transferred it between each other, but they didn't really know um, how they could get it. Um, now you might get it by turning on the stove, but have you ever thought about getting it from a blender? Probably not, right? So today we're going to show that you can blend water and increase its temperature. And pretty much the same thing as heating it on the stove. It's not necessarily as effective, but you can still do it and you can see the result. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this um, blender, which gets its energy from the wall outlet, um, and then it converts it into mechanical energy um, inside the blender, spinning the blade. And that energy will be transferred to the water in the form of heat. So the way Joule did his experiment was he took a container of water with weights suspended by pulleys and he would drop them. And now the work done by those weights due to gravity was the work that was transferred to the water. And that's how he measured the heat transfer. Um, and his experiment was incredibly insulated. He got it down to very precise numbers. He got um, the, the, number, the, the number of joules, which is the amount of mechanical work named after him, was for, for water was um, 4.178. My blender is not as insulated as his system was. So last night I measured um, how much heat was lost to the atmosphere by just putting some water um, from the faucet in the blender and just recording the temperature about every 30 seconds. So you can do that as well. Um, and after we're done, we'll add that heat loss back into the total so we know how much work is actually done by the blender. So okay. So now what we're going to do is perform the experiment. So we're going to measure the initial temperature of the water and it's 24.8 degrees Celsius. And this is a temperature gauge which um, uses infrared light to measure the temperature. But you don't have to use that. You can use just a basic thermometer. Um, it'd probably be a good idea to get one that has um, a lot of lines so that you can tell with more precision what the temperature is. Um, my temperature gauge goes to point uh, to the tenths of a degree. To get a specific measurement, I'm going to measure it to make sure it's the same. It's still 24.8 room temperature. So now I'm going to blend it for 30 seconds and I'm going to time it to try to keep a consistent uh, amount of time in between blending. You can do the same with any time you have, maybe on the cell phone or something. So, let's start. So as we do this, try to think about what's happening to the water um, from the blender. The water is being moved around so that the, like, the motion on the part is increased. Which and heat is based on the movement of the individual particles. All right. So that was about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to measure this. So now that increased from 24.8 to 25.2. And just to make sure that it's not a fluke, we're going to do it again. Now it's 25.6. So if you see, do you see the pattern? It started at 24.8, then it went to 
25.2, now it's at 25.6. So that means it's for every 30 seconds that we blend it, and we've been doing it without much time in between, so there's not much heat loss, um, except um, there's constant heat loss, but there's also constant blending, pretty much. So we can assume that that can just be added, the heat loss can just be added onto the total. So that is 0.4 degrees Celsius for 30 seconds of blending. So we can use these numbers that we're getting to figure out um, the power, the efficiency of the blender. Because I, can, I know what the company says the power output of the blender is, and I know how much is actually converted into heat. Um, well, the amount that's converted into heat is equal to the mass times um, the specific heat of water, which is equal to 4.178 joules, hmm, is, which is what Joule found the conversion was, and times the change in temperature. So we can use that to find out the amount of heat, um, divide that by the time to find the, the change in energy, the power, and then we can put that over the total power that the company says it should have to measure the efficiency of changing the electrical energy into the mechanical energy into the heat energy. So it's not going to be very efficient, but you can, it's still an interesting thing to do to figure out an application of this experiment. So um, that's all for today. I hope you had fun, and you can perform this experiment quite easily with the supervision of an, of an adult. Have fun.